Diddle Arena on the campus of Western Kentucky University in Bowling Green, where it's a Conference USA matchup featuring the Panthers of Florida International taking on the Hilltoppers on a wet Thursday night here in Kentucky. Hi everyone, Steve Schlanger alongside the Player of the Year, Tyler Hansborough. Glad to have you with us, and it is a good crowd here on this Thursday night. We are now deep into conference play. It has been a terrific home run so far for this Hilltopper squad as they are still unbeaten here at home, not just in conference play, but for the entirety of the season. They have been terrific here at Diddle Arena. And as far as tonight's game, Tyler, boy, these are the two top teams in the conference at this point in the season in terms of offensive production. They're fast, they go up tempo. This thing's gonna be a drag race here tonight. It's gonna be a track meet. And for Florida International, you have Javante Hawkins. What, he's had three 20 plus games lately. And then for Western Kentucky, we have Don McHenry who can get it going and light you up. Don McHenry, I just talked about him. He can get it going. He can light you up. He can have a big night. It's going to be up and down. For Florida International, Jeremy Ballard in his sixth year in his first ever head coaching job after several assistant stops at places like VCU, Pitt, Illinois State, and Tulsa. While for Western Kentucky, it is first year head coach Steve Luss who spent two years as the head coach at Texas A&M Corpus Christi and is a San Antonio native and was a conference coach of the year before coming here to Bowling Green. Florida International in the dark, Western Kentucky the white for the 49th meeting between these two sides. Western Kentucky leads the all-time series and they've won three of the last four. And it should be a heavy lift this evening for the Panthers because they only have one victory on the road this season while Western Kentucky is unbeaten here at home. Yeah, Western's also had a uh, tough start, you know, especially with the road games. They've taken some losses lately. They're looking to get a big win back at home tonight so they can get to, you know, kind of right the ship a little bit. What do you look for, Tyler, in the early going in a matchup like this? Well, when you have uh, two teams going like this that are both uh, high octane offenses where they get up and down, the first thing you want to do is try to get high quality shots, try to get off to a good start. You know, you want to look for the breaks and you want to look for easy buckets like layups, getting out, pushing the ball, uh, and not settling for jump shots. And then I think other things will start to come. Corner three with the shot clock winding down would not fall for Dante Allen, the redshirt senior from Falmouth, Kentucky, which is just south of Cincinnati. Another corner three opposite end and the first triple of the game. And no one should be surprised that that's Javante Hawkins who leads Conference USA in three-point shooting, the senior from just outside of Kansas City. Hawkins can get it going. He can light you up. That's not a good sign, and also that wasn't a contested three. That was kind of an open look, kind of warm-up three-point shot for him. you got to make him work for everything. Hawkins again sizing up a three. One for two from the field. Western Kentucky cleaning the glass. They are the top rebounding team in Conference USA, also the top scoring team. And finally get on, on the board here on their home floor, a pair of three-point baskets to open the game in the first two minutes. Top two scores for each squad with a pair from downtown. And now here is Arturo Dean turning the ball over. Brandon Newman leading the break. Dante Allen trying to finish, and the basket in one. That was what, this is what Western Kentucky, this is what they want to do. They want to turn you over and then they want to turn it into transition buckets. That was a great push. Dante Allen finishing through contact. Unbelievable finish and he's at the foul line. The second highest percentage shot in basketball. When you can do those two things, you're going to have a good night. The transfer from Kentucky. A Mr. Kentucky basketball in high school where he had over 3,200 high school points. And now Western Kentucky with their first lead here in the early stages. 
Now, Dante Allen, he can light you up. He can really get it going. If he gets his confidence, he's been kind of a streaky shooter, but if he gets it going, he can have a big night as well. Jaden Lipscomb on the three-point miss ahead to Babakar Fai. And he slipped as the ball went through his hands and out of bounds. A couple of early turnovers for Western Kentucky. And coming off their last game, which was a loss at UTEP on Saturday, they turned the ball over 19 times overall. Yeah, on that last one, you know, I really like it when Faye gets out and runs in transition, especially rim runs. Uh, he can get out and he can get those easy buckets. He's a big that can really run. He just lost his footing on that last one. Uh, you know, FIU kind of got lucky there. Well, Seth Pickney, the senior from Philadelphia, called for a foul offensively for FIU. Western Kentucky has lost two in a row and three of four after a terrific stretch earlier this season where they won eight in a row and nine of ten. And now FIU pressing. This is a signature of their pattern of play. They like to press. They like to apply pressure all over the floor. I would expect Western Kentucky to start going inside. I really do think FIU is guard reliant, and I think uh, Faye can have a big night. Also, I think Howard could come in and have a big night, and they can get some stuff inside. Both teams dealing with some injuries to players who have been starters this season, so a mix and match type of lineup on both sides, and there's a traveling violation. That's back-to-back -back turnovers and two trips down the floor for the Panthers. I tell you what, Western Kentucky, they can really get out and guard you and apply pressure. When they do that, they make teams turn over. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, your defense is your best offense, and they do that really well. Dante Allen had it knocked away from behind, but it stays with Western Kentucky. Florida International also very good at turning their opponents over. In fact, they are third in the nation at forced turnovers per game. So two teams that like to turn the other over and then run in transition. Arturo also leads the nation in steals. I think he's at 4.4 a game. Yep. Here's Newman underneath. Brand Newman, second leading score for the Hilltoppers, the redshirt senior from Valparaiso, Indiana. Preseason All-Conference USA. It's off the top of the backboard, and Sonogo is fouled from behind. Mohamed Sonogo, the junior from Pittsfield, Mass, as he went up for the offensive rebound. Yeah, here we are. This is just a couple guys going for the rebound. Yeah, it looks like he got him just on the arm right there. Good call. Sonogo is going to be critical on both ends in the paint here tonight on the glass for this FIU team that doesn't rebound all that well, and they're going up against a Hilltopper squad that leads the conference in rebounding this season. Yeah, and that, that's why I think that Faye in particular could have a big night because he is a big-time offensive rebounder. When he works, he can really put himself in, in good position to get offensive rebounds and get those rebounds. Second three-point basket of the game, Pedar Kravakovic from the corner for FIU. And then the Hilltoppers trying to run after the made three and drawing the foul. And that's just what I was talking about there. Faye just got out and rim ran right there. It looks like, I'm not sure if they're going to give him two or not, but it looks like he might have gotten fouled on that offensive rebound trying to go back up for that putback. Trying to see if he's going to get some free throws here. From my angle, I do think that he was trying to shoot it on that putback, so I think he'll get some free throws here. I think they're going to look at this, so they're over taking a peek here. Either way, the foul was whistled. It's just a matter of how they assess it now. Our officials, Kip Kissinger, Amy Bonner, Antonio Petty here tonight in Bowling Green. Well, not often you get a video review less than four minutes in, but <laughs> trying to determine exactly where we're going to go here, and that is to the free throw line for two shots. It, it looked like an easy call from here. I, I thought for sure he was shooting so they'd get these free throws. And also, I'm really glad at the uh, in the manner they did that. Sometimes these replays, they can take a long time. That was a quick process. I, that was a good job by these refs. Get over there, get that call, get us moving. Babakar Fai, the junior from Senegal. 
transfer from the College of Charleston. Came through the NBA Academy of Africa and has played very well so far this season and coming off a double-digit scoring performance when he had 12 in the most recent outing, the loss at UTEP on Saturday. He can have a huge impact on these games, not only uh, just from you know, lighting you up and rebounding. He plays with such an energy that it's contagious and rubs off on everybody else. He's a big part of you know what they like to do and how they like to get out and run. He's one of those athletic bigs that can really get out and transition and you know, get some offensive rebound, and he plays extremely hard. Tough defensive matchup for any opposition. He's out of the game now. Rodney Howard has checked in. Here is Hawkins against Newman. Javante Hawkins was lobbing it up for Sonogo, but he couldn't get around Dante Allen. Now Newman. Three-point lead for the Hilltoppers. Just over four gone by. Now Howard just off the bench. It's a very deep Western Kentucky team. In fact, they got 40 points from their bench on Saturday. Almost half their points came from guys who did not start the game. They are a deep team, especially with the style and the way they like to play. They're going to have to use their bench. They get a turnover here. Both teams a little sloppy in the early going. Trying to find their rhythm. Five minutes deep. And it just rolls off the rebound of Jaden Brewer, the sophomore from Indianapolis. And he's going to go wire to wire and get blocked by Allen. The trailing block by Allen, who just scorched it. Blistering run down floor, trying to recover defensively. As we step aside, exactly five minutes gone by in Western Kentucky, out to the three-point lead here at Diddle Arena. Western Kentucky back at Diddle Arena after losing at UTEP on Saturday, a very tight game where there were nine lead changes. Western Kentucky actually shot 62% from the field, but they were not good from the free throw line, turned the ball over 19 times, and then prior to that, they were also on the road at New Mexico State a week ago tonight. They had a 23-point lead with 16 minutes left to go and coughed it up. So two very different types of games, but two very disappointing losses and trying to right things here back at home tonight where they're 8-0 on the season. And I, I will tell you, they're happy to be home. You know, these conference games, especially on the road, can be extremely difficult, and that also would explain the lack of free throw shooting. But also tonight, you look at the, you know, the box score, and you see that Western Kentucky already has five turnovers. So they really need to take care of the ball. It's going to be big emphasis. Third three-point basket came with the shot clock winding down, and it's Pedar Kravakovic with his second since coming off the bench, the junior from Montenegro. And he has two of their three from downtown. Ooh. That could have that, that could have been called either way, uh, but that was great penetration, getting it inside, and we're going to have two free throws. Here we are. He just makes a great drive, and boy, I don't, I didn't see, got the foul, which is going to be, uh, he's going to go, he's going to go to the line, and these are going to be two buckets for more. He, he's a pretty good shooter. He can get it going too, but I like his aggress aggressiveness right there, taking it to the basket, which Western Kentucky, that's what they want to do. Tegan Moore, the freshman from Dry Ridge, Kentucky, which is just south of Cincinnati. Had a 15-point outing in the last game on Saturday and should see some pretty substantial minutes here tonight. And that's because Christian Lander is out of tonight's game. The senior from Evansville is in the concussion protocol, so missing his second straight game here this evening. Yeah, these are going to be big minutes for Moore. And he's a guy that can come in and provide this team who which hasn't shot it that well from the three-point line. He's a very good three-point shooter, which would be big for Western Kentucky if he can develop into that. Here's Newman. Good rebound and take by Rodney Howard. Goes straight back up for his first deuce of the game. And, and that's 
That's what I thought might happen. I thought Rodney Howard could really give Western Kentucky a huge boost in this game, in particular on the rebounds. And also, he is great at putting himself in position, deep ceiling position, where he can just go right up and score. That was a great job by him. Shot clock at five. Arturo Dean can't connect. And the Hilltoppers on the go. Palumbe on the miss, Newman the follow. That's what they want to do. They want to get you out in transition, and I know that wasn't a fast break point, but that was great effort from Newman to get that rebound and go right back up. And great block. Enoch Colombe, a sensational stuff, and he's going to try to finish with the Euro. But he back irons the attempt. Boy, what a sequence that would have been. And that's going to be an offensive foul. You could see that one coming as it was developing. And proper play, Tegan Moore absorbing the contact. That was a great job for Moore to get back, put himself uh, you know, right there. Yes, great run from Moore. He could read this, it was telegraph. Way to just sacrifice his body in a charge is huge, beneficial. Gets, stops Florida International from scoring and gives Western Kentucky the ball back. Huge play for him. And I tell you, the, I, the momentum right now has totally shifted to Western Kentucky. This is what they want to do. That it was a great, savvy move from the freshman Moore. Now well, Western Kentucky leads by six. They have scored the last six over the last minute and a half. Here's Tyrone Marshall. Moore had it tipped away. Florida International losing at Liberty one week ago tonight as Arturo Dean lifts it high off the glass. And here's Don McHenry. He's going to go the distance oh. and draw the foul. And this is what we thought we'd see before the game. Uh, this pace is starting to pick up. As soon as Western Kentucky, they get that turnover or they get that rebound, they are pushing. Looking right here. Here we go. They're off to the races right here. Good push. Great run, and you can see that Western Kentucky had the bodies to follow up for the missed shot from McHenry. You could see uh, Howard was right there if they didn't get the, the foul, but McHenry got it, and he's at the line. And getting to the line early and often here in this game. That's already half the number of free throws they had in their entire last game, as they are now five of six from the stripe so far here, and McHenry just about a lock every time he goes to the line, an 84% free throw shooter leading this squad. Yeah, free throws are huge. Uh, one thing free throws can do is when you're having a tough shooting night, it can give you the confidence to see the ball go in. And when you do that, it gives you confidence in other areas of the game. Then you'll start to see your jump shot falling and things like that. And also getting to the free throw line, it's also a sign of attacking the basketball or attacking attacking and getting the ball inside, which is critical. 8 nothing run for the Hilltoppers. And for Florida International. And they are 0 of their last four from the field. They haven't scored in almost two and a half minutes now. Western Kentucky has really come out and started putting pressure on them defensively. This is what they do. This is what they want to do defensively is really apply a lot of pressure. They do play a lot of old school basketball with a hard hedge. Right now they're switching with everybody. Arturo Dean. And now McHenry. Thought he could split the defenders, but he's called for the offensive charge instead. That was an easy call. He was there, he was set. So just inside of a dozen minutes left to go, first half, and Western Kentucky in the midst of an eight nothing run and leading by eight. It is a 17 to nine lead for the Hilltoppers and they have really dug in defensively. How about this block from the junior from Quebec, Enoch Calambe, a highlight-worthy dunk. This was a huge block. He came over. It's actually helped the helper. So the ball screen, look, he would have had a wide-open dunk. Calambe came over, blocked it. And this is what Western Kentucky wants to do. As soon as they get the block, they want to push, and they're off to the races. And Florida International in a drought here. 
one of their last seven from the field. It's been almost three minutes since they've hit a bucket. And also, you could say from the last break that we've had, Western Kentucky has not turned the ball over since we mentioned that they had five turnovers. So they are starting to take care of the ball, which is critical. Dean has to run it down. Arturo Dean threads defenders. That's a nice scoop and score for Arturo Dean, the sophomore from Miami, staying home to play college basketball. Moore had a two-on-one advantage, so just took it right to the rack. That was actually a very good rim run from Howard, which actually opened that bucket up for Moore. They had a one-on-two classic right there. And you could see that Howard was also looking to seal, which actually kind of gave Moore a little bit more of an open lane. But that was a great take from him. Devontae Hawkins is now one of three from downtown. And the triples aren't falling now all of a sudden for the Panthers. They've, they've really done a good job on Hawkins ever since he came out to start the game on that three-pointer that he made wide open. He hasn't had many open looks since that shot. The Panthers three of eight from beyond the arc right now. And trailing by eight. And that is gonna be a foul on Jack Edelin, the freshman from Louisville. You can really see Dean starting to try to really establish himself in this game. He's been one guy that's kind of demanded the ball. He feels like he has a little bit of a mismatch in trying to take his man off the dribble, which he is very quick. Now they thought they had a size mismatch underneath and they get Edelin for his second foul just coming off the bench. Here we are. This is just an old school high low pass. They they really thought they had the mismatch there, which they probably did. Uh, but good hard seal. And anytime you're you know offensively aggressive, you do get the benefit of the doubt with the mismatch. Long three from Arturo Dean, and the fourth triple of this first half for Florida International finally ends this long scoring slump and gets them to within five here as we come up on the midway point of this first half. And Enoch Calambe just charging all the way. The JUCO transfer, where he was an All-American in Iowa at the junior college level. Now Wilcox can't find the range. Dante Wilcox, the grad student from West Palm Beach. It was a really tough finish from Calambe on that last bucket through to the finish. Very impressive. And McHenry threw it away. Western Kentucky had cleaned it up a little bit in terms of the early turnovers. That is now six on the game for them, but the first five came in the first six minutes. Yeah, that was kind of unlucky, or unlucky for uh, Newman right there. It looked like the ref kind of maybe got in his way, but hey, sometimes it happens. Could have been a better pass as well. Now the Panthers now with seven turnovers here in the game. Newman had to go a long way to get that one to drop off last. With the left-handed finish as well, that was a great move from him. Also, Newman came from Purdue from last year, and also he's done a really good job of helping West Kentucky you know, offensively. He's had a huge presence uh, for them and has really been good for them all year. Well, this sort of intense pressure is part and parcel of the defense for Florida International. They get the turnover here. And now Lipscomb in the corner, double teamed. Good look, good find, and Wilcox with the finish. Now Tyrone Marshall trying to use pace to break up this full court pressure. And then the foul on five here. Oh no, they're gonna call a traveling violation here. So that's gonna be a travel on Arturo Dean instead. I didn't really have a good eye on it. it looked like he just got a little happy feet right there, but you know, Dean is one of those guys that got a little lucky. And he is a, he is quick, and also he's going to the bench for a breather. He's been big. Arturo Dean leading this team and the nation in steals, leading rebounder. You can understand why. He is a quick guard. Corner three won't fall for Brandon Newman. 
Florida International has won two of their last three after losing three of four. Coming off the loss at Liberty a week ago. I tell you what, that was great help side defense for Brandon Newman. He's the reason they just turned that ball over right there. They're, they're big, had a clear, uh, wide open lane to the bucket, but he came over and just helped on the pick and roll and really prevented him from getting a wide open dunk right there. Well, outside of the opening three-point basket for Javante Hawkins, Western Kentucky has led throughout this entire game. The margin right now five with eight and a half left to go. What's been the signature thing that has stuck out so far in this first half to you? Well, for me, is I don't think Florida International has had any easy buckets. I think they've all been contested. And also, they've done a great job of guarding Hawkins. Everything that he shot has had a hand in his face. But also, I think West Kentucky has done a great job of getting the ball and pushing him out in transition, which they're known for, and that's their trademark. And they've got a lot of wide open buckets in, tra in transition has really helped them uh, establish themselves offensively. Baba Carfe fouled by Mohamed Sonogo. And a timeout, which is south of eight minutes left to go in the first half, and the Hilltoppers on top of the Panthers by five. Back at Diddle Arena, where Western Kentucky leads Florida International here in this first half. It is also the pink game here tonight for coaches versus cancer. So a lot of pink shirts in the crowd and they just had a ceremony during one of the timeouts. So pick out coaches versus cancer night. They've been planning this for a while and always a tremendous cause. You can also see the coaching staff for Western Kentucky in the pink polos and the pink warmups for the players as well. All right, Babacar five to the free throw line here. And a pair of free throws coming up for Fye, who is one of two from the stripe so far here in this first half. One of the many transfers on this Western Kentucky squad, essentially everybody who sees significant minutes has played somewhere else. That's the new era of college basketball. And for a first year head coach, so many new players. What a trick it is to get the calculus right and try to get everybody playing together the way a seasoned team would, right? It's such a tough task, but also you got to give uh, Lutz a lot of credit. He went to the portal, recruited a lot of guys. Uh, and, you know, they have come in. It's kind of been plug and play. Faye has been has, has been a great player for him all year. Also, he was great at College of Charleston. College of Charleston had a great year last year. They went on a great run, undefeated for the majority of the year. Uh, yeah, so it was a great pickup for him. Ball out of bounds. Newman with a huge foul as he tried to go up for the rebound, or a huge fall, I should say, as he hit the deck hard. There was a lot of physicality on that last one. Uh, <laughs> Newman gets right up, uh, just like, man, he he knocked, he shrugged that off like it wasn't uh, anything. That was a hard fall. Javante Hawkins had that first basket of the game, the three-pointer in the opening minute, but he's been quiet since. Five to shoot here. And Lipscomb. is going to drain the three. Jaden Lipscomb, the junior from Columbus, Ohio, Second on this team and made threes, and a guy who was coming off the bench earlier this season, but now is very much a regular rotation player. As wow. Keegan Moore goes up and gets the basket and the foul. And one for him. That was a heck of a finish. Good fighting through that physicality and also finishing through contact. Uh, like we said, West Kentucky, yeah, here we go. Good rim run by Faye as well that opened Moore up to get that layup. Finish through contact, great finish for the freshman. Coming in, having a huge impact, and he's going to be big for West Kentucky, taking advantage of getting these opportunities in these minutes as they're dealing with some injuries right now. And an offensive foul and a legal screen on Seth Pinckney, the senior transfer from Quinnipiac. 
That was an easy call. You cannot be moving as you're trying to set a screen. I'm not even sure if he was trying to set a screen. He just looked like he ran into Moore right there. Uh, so that was an easy call for the ref. So just under seven minutes left to play in a six-point game. Now for the scoring troubles that Florida International has had, it feels like the Hilltoppers should be further ahead than they are. It, it really does, but also Florida International's hit some tough shots as well. And that great penetration from McHenry right there. If he gets it going, it could be a good one. They can open this thing up just a little bit if he gets his confidence. But you're right, you know, this game seems like, you know, Western Kentucky should be up by, by more. Well, Kravakovic leads all scores. He now has three triples here in this first half. He's three of five from downtown. Florida International is starting to fill it from outside. You, know? you let this team get hot, it could be a tough one. And Dante Allen traveled with the basketball. Now eight turnovers on Western Kentucky. When you push and you run and you get out in transition, there's going to be some turnovers. But I think the key, one of the keys for the second half for Western Kentucky is going to be taking care of the ball. This Florida international side, 7-12 and 12 on the season, only one win away from home. But they started the year 1-6, and six, so they've been playing better basketball here in the last month or so and improving as the season has unfolded. Arturo Dean getting to the free throw line here for the Panthers. And these will be the first free throws of the game for the visitors. Great penetration from Arturo Dean. Uh, you know, more just, you know, sometimes when you go straight up and the offensive player comes into you, it's a natural falling position. Uh, he did get that call, but uh, that was a good straight up a little bit from Moore, but there's a lot of contact which could have gone either way, and Dean shooting these free throws. The reigning Conference USA Freshman of the Year led all freshmen in the conference since scoring last year and had a huge game here in Bowling Green a year ago, 15 points and a career-high nine rebounds at Diddle Arena. Dean's playing really well tonight. He's hunting his shot, looking for his opportunities, and you can never underestimate what he does defensively. He gets out into passing lanes, and he gets those steals, which as quick as he is, just turns around into a fast break. Three-point lead. Under six to go, first half. Brandon Newman scoping out a three, and he jars it. That was such a great shot. Not rushing it. Just took what the defense gave him, knocked it wide down. I, I really like Newman's game. He's been big. Preseason, all-conference player. First triple of the game for him. Kravakovic, the hottest from downtown so far in this first half, faced the double team, so he fed it wisely to Pinckney, who scores from down low. That was a good finish from the big man. He kind of wanted an and one right there. But uh, good, good job putting himself in position to go right up. Newman turned it over. Here is Dean, leading the nation in steals this season, but he lost the handle, just got out of control. Five minutes to go, first half. Western Kentucky trying to build on this four-point advantage. Newman down for Howard. And I, Howard, that was such a great job of sealing down low. Sometimes he can get himself in just a little bit of a rush. If he just takes his time and then gets to that right-hand hook like he does, he's almost automatic. Jaden Lipscomb with a rainbow three. Lipscomb's hit some big shots. That's the second big-time contested shot he's made. And the answer from Dante Allen. The transfer from Kentucky. And now back to a three-point game as Arturo Dean goes high off the glass. Tyrone Marshall. Oh. Uh. What a finish from Marshall. Just gets the ball, takes it all the way down the court, and flushes it. Unbelievable athletic play. A senior from Nashville as Lipscomb. That's one way to break the press. Lipscomb missing on the three. Don McHenry, he's going to take it all the way. And the floater 
will fall. And a timeout taken by Florida International. They had pulled it within one, but the Hilltoppers came racing back, and now the lead has grown once again to five with just under four minutes left to play here in the first half from Bowling Green. 38-33, the last few minutes of this first half, and Tyrone Marshall, the senior from Nashville, just came in flying for the finish. Unbelievable athletic play from him. Also, Florida International getting out, and they're really pressing. They've been pressing all game. That's one way to break the press. He's, Marshall just said, give me the ball. Let me take it. I'll go right to the rack and dunk it. But also, once you get past that front line on that press, sometimes it's just like a transition and being in fast break. You can have numbers. You can have a situation where you're two on one or three on one that allows you to get those type of buckets. Teams also starting to hit from the field now as that block goes up into the third row over there on the far side of the court. That's a couple of big blocks. Bubba Gofar gets up and knocks it away. By just being athletic like he, like he is, chasing down the, the, uh, Hawkins as he gets into the lane. Great block, great help side defense from him. with the rebound. Western Kentucky team plays at a tempo as fast as any squad in the nation. And they're going to get a foul here on Florida International, Jaden Brewer, the sophomore. That's what Western Kentucky likes to do. And also, they have the players to do it. And it's not that... Uh, I would say it's been a point of emphasis based off the roster that they have. And uh, all their guards, they really get it out in transition and really push it, everybody. And also five, he's a big man athletic that can run as good as anybody in the country. So it really fits their style. First free throws of the night for Enoch Kalambai, the junior from Quebec. He's played for the Canadian youth national teams. And Western Kentucky very good from the line so far. 10 of 12 here in this first half. And another three-pointer falls. This time from George Pritchett, the junior from Boston and transfer from Polk State College. That is the eighth three-pointer of this first half for the visitors. Dante Allen answers with a triple of his own for Western Kentucky. Big time bucket for Allen. Also, Florida International, you can tell right away, they're, they are an outside shooting team. That's something that they're looking for in every possession. 34% from downtown so far this season. And that's Jaden Brewer. Bay just wants to take it all the way. And he's going back to the free throw line. As you can see, once Western Kentucky, once they break that front part, that front line. Yeah, here we go. You see, you can see where Faye kind of gets there and seals his man, which actually opens, kind of puts a lot of pressure on the defense, but also gives Callum Bay almost, you know, that one and two, one on two situation offensively where you can get that layup. No. Oh, and I think we might be getting a technical foul here. I was focused on the replay. I'm not really sure what's going on, but Florida International is pretty hot right now. It's Mohamed Sonogo. Sonogo is upset. And that's now Four personal fouls on him here in this first half. Dante Allen at the free throw line. Wow. Boy, what a swing this is. I tell you what, Ballard doesn't like it for Florida International right, either, right now either. He's over there completing his case with the ref. But also, you, you have to say that 
Sunogo getting his fourth personal foul, as guard reliant as Florida International is, there's a big size advantage that Western Kentucky has. So that is a big foul, and him in foul trouble, it could open up a lot of things for Howard and also five. So he will obviously come out of the game. Jeremy Ballard was upset before the technical. Then that added another layer of frustration. He's over talking to Sunogo, clearly displeased. Trying to settle him down on the bench. And boy, what a pivot point this could be here late in this first half. Two minutes left to go. Florida International had been climbing back into this game. They had gotten to within one, had been hanging around, but now that could be a shift in the psyche of the way this first half plays out. 100%. That's a great point. You know, especially in college, these technical fouls for players, you know, it, it sometimes it's a little bit of a selfish play. Sometimes you've got to put your emotions behind you and do what's best for the team and stay focused on the mission and what you can do to have a positive impact on the game. And I know it's very difficult. Snogo is still kind of frustrated about it. But sometimes you've got to have short memory. You've got to put mistakes behind you and still be able to play. Hardest thing is when you're so emotional, right, and you're in the moment to all of a sudden turn the page that quickly isn't the easiest thing to do. It's not, but it's discipline. It's extremely hard. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it won't be the last time that it happens, I'll tell you that. So Dante Wilcox, after the Howard fall on the other end, the grad student from West Palm at the free throw line for Florida International. They haven't missed 4-4 four four from the stripe here in his first half. Under two to play. Such a five-point game. Such a size advantage for Howard down low. Dante Allen Dante. muscling his way inside as well. Dante Allen crafting a very fine opening frame here. He leads all scores right now with 12 points, the only player into double figures. Dean had it blocked. A second crack at it, but Brewer can't convert. Alibi had it stolen. Hawkins, wide open, Pritchett three in transition. George Pritchett, the junior. There was ninth three-point basket for the Panthers. That's a foul on the floor by Arturo Dean. I'm not sure how many foul Deans have has, but if he's in foul trouble, that's going to be that's going to be tough for Florida International. He's he's had a good. He's had a good game, and he's been one of the players Florida International has been playing and competing hard all night. He's been a big boost, and uh, they're going to need him late. Only his first. Okay, so he's good. In, he's in good shape. Dante Allen at the free throw line. He's perfect on the game so far. Now 4-4. Four, four. Dante Allen continues his fine run of four. We talked about it. He said Dante Allen's one of those guys from Western Kentucky that can really heat up and have a huge night. Looks like he's got his confidence. He's hunting his shot. Also, he's out in transition. Once they break that press, he's looking to drive it right to the rim, and he's knocking down his three-point shots, which has been big for Western. He's had a huge night so far. Leading all scores with 14 points now. He's the leading three-point shooter on this team, but only has one shot from downtown so far, so that's an indication he's scoring in different ways as well. Under a minute to play first half. Six-point lead for the home side. Corner three. Rebound to five. About a six-second difference, shot clock to game clock. And a timeout taken by Steve Lutz. So a chance with 31.5 to conjure up something here to extend this lead going to the locker room at the break. I'm going to be interested to see what they run. Uh, I'm not sure this is a two-for-one situation, which if they do come out and they try to get a shot off, uh, which would give Florida International, you know, it would give them another chance to get a second shot off because Florida International, obviously there's going to be more time. 
left on the clock than the shot clock when they get the ball. So they'll have another chance at another shot. But I don't think this is one of those situations. I think they're going to kind of run down the clock a little bit. And maybe when it gets to about eight, eight seconds on the shot clock, I, I would suspect that Western Kentucky is going to get try to get into a play around that time. Western Kentucky really shooting the ball well here over the second portion of this first half. They're five of the last five from the field and for the game shooting 59%. That's 20 percentage points higher than where Florida International is. Well, Florida International shot a lot of outside jump shots and it seems like they're all shooting these three point shots whereas Western Kentucky's getting out, they're getting pressed which naturally leads to layups and getting the ball inside. Six to shoot. The three ball pops out. Tyrone Marshall couldn't convert. Five seconds to go in the half. Arturo Dean will kick it out for Hawkins. He'll launch the three at the buzzer, and he buries it. That's the way the game started with a Hawkins three. That's the way the first half ends. And is that a huge lift or what for the Panthers? Makes it a three-point game here at the break at Diddle Arena in Bowling Green. Now Florida International with a big three-point basket right at the end of the first half to get back to within three has them feeling optimistic going to the second half. And another reason for being glass half full is the play of the sophomore from South Florida, Arturo Dean, second leading scorer on this team who's been active all over the floor. Yeah, Arturo Dean, he is one of those quick athletic guards, can get around anybody. It's going to take a full team effort from Western Kentucky to really try to contain him. He is great at penetrating and getting inside and finishing through traffic. But also, Karbika pitch, he can get it going from outside. He is a guy who has really made a lot of outside shooting for FIU and really has given them a lift. But also, you could say, look for Hawkins, their leading scorer, to really try to make his impact. He made the last shot to end the first half and started the game with the shot. That's the only points that he's had. He is their leading scorer. He's got to get himself established in this game. Meanwhile, for Western Kentucky, Dante Allen has led the Hilltoppers in scoring with 14 points. He's the only player for either team in double figures. Allen, sensational in the first 20. Yeah, he's a guy that can really get his confidence up and can have big scoring nights. Now, right now, he is playing super aggressive. He's putting his head down, especially when they break the press. They move the ball around. He's also a guy that can hit it from outside. And if he gets hot from outside, it's going to be a big night. He's getting inside. He's making tough buckets inside the paint. That has big. As soon as they break the, the press, as you're seeing a lot of the highlights right here, uh, Dante Allen's really put himself in good position to score. And also right there you saw Brandon Newman, who's also played unbelievable tonight. And he's been playing well for them all year. The transfer from Purdue has been doing big things like he's always been doing. So out of the locker room, if you're the two head coaches, what adjustments will you have made going into the second half? One, uh, in particular for Western Kentucky, I look to establish ourselves inside. I use our size advantage, and then I try to get our bigs to dominate the boards like they've been doing all year. And I continue to push the ball off of turnovers and made buckets. But if I'm FIU, uh, you've got to find ways to get easy buckets. Everything that they've had tonight has been contested and challenged. You've got to find ways to, to get Hawkins, your leading scorer, involved in the game. Western Kentucky trying to remain unbeaten here at home this season and trying to end a two-game losing streak while Florida International trying to win for just the second time on the road and trying to get a victory for the third time in their last four outings. First of two meetings this season and into the second half of a three-point game. So many of the games in the last two years have been close ones between these two teams. And what an early block that is by Seth Pinckney, the senior from Philly. Great block, great rim protection. Florida International trailing for all but 30 seconds 
of the first half. And they haven't played in particular all that well. And they've done a good job of staying in the game and keeping it close. alley -oop from Dean to Pinckney. So Seth Pinckney comes out and has the big block on one end and the finish on the other. Unbelievable start for Pinckney. FIU, this is what they've got to do. They've come out in the second half and applied a lot of pressure and made some, you know, a stop and then got out, got an easy bucket. It's, you know, it doesn't get easier than an alley-oop the dunk. Don McHenry, off angle, but banks it off the glass. McHenry now into double figures with 11. Coming off an 18-point performance, leading the squad on Saturday in the loss at UTEP. You can see FIU starting to share the ball a little bit more, passing around, make Western Kentucky work defensively, and they got a turnover. Western Kentucky, they got lucky right there. That was a lackadaisical turnover from FIU. 11th turnover of the game for the Panthers. They had been moving the ball well. Looking for that open shot. And that's deflected, but right back to Marshall. The Hilltoppers got a break. And now for Allen, and he cans the three. His second of the game, and now 17 points on the night. Allen's just picking up where he left off in the first half. Dumped inside to Pinckney, couldn't control it. And now McHenry leading the three on two. And he's got four points here in the first two minutes of this second half. FIU's got to do a better job of getting back defensively, in particular in transition when Western Kentucky gets the ball. Western's getting a lot of easy buckets inside. Tipped away as they tried to find Pinckney down low. And then McHenry needs help. Marshall in the corner, another three on the way. Brandon Newman, his second triple on the night, and a timeout taken by the Panthers. Largest lead of the night. The Hilltoppers by 11 over FIU. They have come out flying here in the second half in Bowling Green. Quick start for the Hilltoppers here at the outset of this second half, and the lead has ballooned. 59-48 is where we stand right now. Just over two minutes gone by, and the home side, two of their first two from three-point range. Absolutely. Western Kentucky has really done a good job of getting out in transition, just like they always do. They have numbers. They're passing it around to the open man, and they've hit a couple nice open three-pointers to start the first half. And just like I said, FIU's got to find a way to get back and stop Western Kentucky uh, from their transition points. They knew coming in that this was one of the fastest tempo teams in college basketball. What has been the biggest issue with not getting back tonight? Well, to me, it looks like they're continuing to press. And what they're doing is they're just breaking their press, which always puts FIU at a vulnerable position because Western Kentucky, it's always a one or two or one or three scenario. On the power five, drops it in. I think Five's going to have a big second half. He's one of these guys that has good post moves and also he's a very athletic big and get out there and block. That was a great block, but it did get called for a foul right there. But he's a guy who I think has a huge impact on the game from just his motor. They're, first it, personal. First personal, but also Arturo Dean. That's a great penetration job from him. That's what he does. He gets the ball inside. He always has the ability. He always has an advantage with his quickness, which gives him the ability to get around his defender and get the ball inside. First player into double figures for the Panthers. He's got 10, and he's perfect from the free throw line as well. He's a heck of a player. He's somebody who has really impressed me tonight. And also, the motor that he plays with and how hard he plays, I really like his game. He does a lot defensively. We talked about it. He leads the nation in steals, but also he gets the ball out in transition and looks for his teammates. He does everything for FIU. Florida International certainly has not shot near the same number of free throws as Western Kentucky, but they're perfect. Six of six now from the line tonight. Marshall lost the handle, and now the Panthers trying to run with it. 
and another block by five, but they're going to call him for another foul, and that's two quick personal fouls on Babakar Fai. Fai needs to be careful right here. He can get a tee real quick. Ow. Hey, hey, you know what? Sometimes, you, like I've said, you get the benefit of the whistle if you're <laughs> if you're aggressive offensively. I don't know. Sometimes it could have gone either way. It looked like a good athletic block, but you've got to give up by you credit for at least attacking the basket, getting the ball inside, which gets in that shot. Those free throws, free throws are critical. The fly coming out of the game. He'll be replaced by Rodney Howard. Deshaun Gittins, the sophomore from Hartford at the free throw line. He's on the Conference USA All-Freshman team last season. Had a pretty solid game in double figures the last time Florida International came here to Diddle Arena. They got some work to do, though, here in this second half. And now Dante Allen, who has been all over the floor tonight, hitting from all corners, extending the lead with his third three-point basket. Dante Allen shot that ball, that ball before the pass even got to him. He was hunting his shot. You could tell that thing was going straight up uh, as soon as that pass was headed his direction. Hilltoppers lead by a dozen. Five to shoot. Gittins. And that is the 11th three-point basket of the game, first to the second half for the Panthers. And he had to work for it. Tough shot. You know, they, they, they guarded him almost the whole shot clock possession, which really makes the defense work. It can wear Western Kentucky down, but you know, Bell out the end. Good possession for Bell out That's Howard. It was very significant in contributing 16 points off the bench in a loss at UTEP on Saturday, and so far he's put in some quality minutes here at home tonight. Kravakovic. I think Howard's going to have a big half as well. And the reason I say that is because I do think they have a size advantage. And here is Howard. Just spinning Pinkney inside out. I really think Howard is a very effective player when he get, establishes himself deep inside the paint because he can go right up with his size and his height, right up, easy bucket. So like I said, that right hand hook puts himself inside, easy bucket for him. Here is Hawkins, leading three-point shooter in Conference USA. It pops out. He's hit just two from beyond the arc so far tonight, both in the first half. Don McHenry and a timeout taken by Florida International, their biggest deficit of the game. A 6-0 run here in the last minute, but Western Kentucky could not be hotted. Nine of their last nine from the field here, and they lead by 15 early in the second half. Well, what a demonstrative second half so far in the first five minutes for Western Kentucky. Out to their largest lead of the game, 15 points. And they haven't missed from three so far here in this second half either. No, you got to give uh, Dante Allen a lot of credit. He's come out, he's hit some big shots. Uh, he's really gotten things going outside. Uh, but also, Western Kentucky has done a very good job of breaking their press. And whenever they do break FIU's press, they always have numbers. It's always a one-on-two or, you know, a one-on-three situation, which they've really taken advantage of offensively, Western Kentucky has. The Hilltoppers shooting 66% from the field for the game. And have almost 40 points inside the paint. Kravakovic. Now Newman off the rebound. You can see the size advantage right now with Howard in the post. He really wants the ball. And Dante Allen is fouled. He will go back to the free throw line. A good job from Dante Allen. He's, he's been aggressive all night. This is just good passing around. But you've got to give Howard credit for that seal right there. And then he opens up. Allen attacks the basket, to gets the foul, goes to the foul line for some easy buckets. Leading all scores with 20 points and one of three players for the Hilltoppers in double figures here in the game right now. Yeah, when he gets it going, he can really have some big scoring nights. 
and so essential to have him with a performance like this, considering Christian Lander has been out for the last couple of games with a concussion. Allen now with 22 on the ninth and a perfect seven of seven from the free throw line. He was a player preseason that a lot of people thought would have a big year, uh, but he's really, in particular, with Lander being out, he's taken advantage of his extended minutes, really done a lot of big things for Western Kentucky. Jaden Brewer missed the dunk. And he pulls up and strokes the three. Brandon Newman. Tied for the most made threes on this team so far this season. Lead is out to 20, but not for long. Deshaun Gittins, his first three-point basket of the night. That was a much-needed bucket. Uh, good ball movement from FIU, but also FIU at some point is going to have to figure out how they can start tacking inside. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Tegan Moore. Offensive foul on number 30, Tegan Moore, his Series of substitutions coming up. Fi as well as Marshall and McHenry all coming back in for the Hilltoppers. Now for Western Kentucky, it's been an onslaught from all angles. Three-point range in the second half, fast break points in the paint. The Panthers have quite a challenge to try and slow down what has become a very prolific Western Kentucky offense here. They do have a challenge, but like I said, they need to find a way to get easier buckets. Everything that they're working for is contested. They need to figure out how they can get some open looks, get some easy buckets, maybe push the ball, get out in transition, look for some easy layups. And also, they've got to get Hawkins going, and they've got to get him involved offensively, who is their leading scorer, who only has six points right now off of two made buckets. Here's Devontae Hawkins getting to the basket in his first non-three-point field goal. Just that's the way you do it. You start off with layups, and then you find other ways to get your confidence going, and then you'll find ways to hit it from outside and get it going for all areas. Columbine misses the contested shot. Now in the corner, Kravakovic. He's got more threes than anybody here tonight. Kravakovic with all of his points coming from downtown. It's no surprise, they've gotten up a lot of outside shots, but he's been one of those guys that has really been looking for a shot, and also he's played very aggressively offensively. He's, he's provided a huge lift and actually have kept them in the game uh, for a majority of this game. Uh, but right now, they need to figure out how they can get some stops and get back into it offensively because uh, they're running out of time, and this game could get out of hand. Provakovic, four of seven from three-point range for 12 points on the night. Now Hawkins, he's had a couple of those three-point shots pop out. Just hasn't had many opportunities and hasn't had the touch as Fye is gonna pick up his third personal. It looks like Fye rim ran right there, but he just got called for just, you know, wrapping the defender. The lead is 12 for Western Kentucky with just under 12 to play. It is an eight-nothing run over the last minute and a half for Florida International, their best stretch so far in this second half of play. Western Kentucky, though, 10 of their last 11 from the field. They continue to shoot the ball well, 65% altogether for the game. But for Florida International, with under 12 minutes left to go now, you can't just be trading baskets. They gotta find a way to continue this run that they have put together. Yeah, they've got to find ways to also make Western Kentucky work for their buckets. Western Kentucky's hit a lot of open shots. Uh, they need to figure out how they can contest and try to slow the pace of the game where they're not always coming down with numbers and on fast breaks. But also, FIU's got to figure out a way to get easier buckets offensively. Everything they're shooting is an outside contested jump shot. Kravakovic for his fifth three. You 
can see Howard really wants it down low, kind of demanding the ball. It looks like he does have a little bit of a mismatch. That's why I think it's so important. I thought he was going to have a big half. Great pass. Right there. Wow. And the basket and one for Tyrone Marshall. That was such a great cut for Marshall. The pass in the post, that's kind of an NBA move a little bit. And so great demanding from the ball for Howard right there, but also for Marshall, once he passes it inside, to make that cut, which really gets him open, unbelievable off the ball movement to put himself right there for the easy jam for the pass from Howard. Marshall at the free throw line for his first time tonight. And as a club collectively, the Hilltoppers now 17 of 21 from the stripe. Gittins and more. And again, quickly getting up the floor. Marshall tips it back to Tegan Moore. Shot clock resets, and then Tegan Moore is fouled, driving the paint. I tell you what, Western Kentucky is playing so aggressive. It just seems like they're just getting the ball and just running as hard as they can. And Howard was demanding the ball right there. He wants the ball every single possession. He feels like he have a, has a mismatch, uh, which he does. Uh, but also, that's opening up a lot of these guards for cutting and getting wide open. Marshall eyes up the three, and he sticks it. FIU's got to figure out how they can get back into this game. They've got to make everything contested for Western Kentucky. They can't give them easy buckets if they want to try to make the same close. Inside for Wilcox, and he comes up short. That was a great defensive possession from Western Kentucky right there. Howard was all over the floor, uh, you know, help side defense in his rotations to get back to his man and make that shot contested. That was a good job from the big man. Also, he's been put in different positions defensively, which he's probably not used to playing because there's such a size advantage. You can see on that last possession, that guard thought there was a mismatch, wanted to take uh, advantage of Howard, but he did a good job of staying and trusting his feet and not fouling. Biggest lead of the night, 18 points for Western Kentucky. Moore takes a shot to the face, and it's a foul on the Panthers as we close in on the halfway point of the second frame. That was a hard collision right there. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, I'm not even sure Lipscomb even saw him, right? Mm. He was trying to cut across the body. He, he was trying to go for that steal. He made a pure gamble right there and just ran into him. I tell you what, that was a hard hit as well. Surprised me that one of those guys was dizzy. Tegan Moore inbounds to Howard. And he's called for pushing off. Well, if you're Western Kentucky, you have this big lead, 10 minutes left to go. Do you change your style at all to work on the clock, or do you continue to play at this pace? I think you continue to do what you've been doing well. I don't. I think there's too much time if you let off the gas a little bit to give FIU a chance to get back in this game. And also, they've done a great job defensively. I wouldn't change it up. I would keep running. And probably around the four-minute mark, that's where I would start to say, hey, let's start killing the clock a little bit and trying to keep, you know, take advantage of this big lead we have. Here is Marshall just having his way. Blowing right by Jaden Grant. Yeah, that was a great drive for Marshall. He's been good all game. Just put his head down. FIU's got to get somebody in help side position to really take away those easy buckets. Well, they had two players there for the rebound, but the Hilltoppers can't come away with it. Just a bad break. But George Pridgett can't convert. He had the easy layup. And that allows the Hilltoppers to run, get it inside to Howard. And he follows his own miss. And that was such a great job from Howard right there. Like I said, early on in the first half, sometimes he rushes his shot a little bit. He established himself. He got good, deep ceiling position where he could go right up. He didn't rush it, but also put him in a position to get his missed shot and go right back up and score. 
Well, Sonogo is back in the game. Remember, Sonogo is playing with four fouls. This is his first appearance of this second half. He picked up his fourth with a technical with a couple of minutes left to go in the first half. But now Howard will tip it in, and FIU just appears helpless down low defensively. Howard's starting to take advantage of his size, but also Howard's always done a really good job of rim running, and you've got to reward the big man for running as hard as he did when you have numbers like that. Great pass from Marshall as well. Pritchett. And trying to build on a 24-point lead with just under eight minutes left to go. Western Kentucky having things all their way right now despite this turnover. Hawkins into the corner. Pritchett lining up the three, and he plants it. And a timeout taken by Steve Lutch. Lutz over on the Western Kentucky bench. Lutz is not happy. Huge lead, but still coaching. 87-66, now with under eight to go. Western Kentucky running the floor, and they are running the Panthers out of their building here at Diddle Arena. Huge lead in Bowling Green. And one of the guys who's really been running well is Rodney Howard. He has really had a great second half, especially lately. He's been a guy who's really got out and rim ran, but you've got to, you've got to reward the big man for running the court, which Marshall does. Right now he's on the bicycle. Listen, that guy has had enough cardio the way he's been running the court right now. I would tell him just to go sit down on a regular <laughs> seat, but he's probably trying to warm himself up, keep himself warm, because you never know what type of injuries these guys Yeah, this is with. not a full Peloton class he's doing over there. <laughs> Edelin misses on the three, but Western Kentucky shooting 30 percentage points higher than Florida International right now. Pritchett, he buries the three. I, I would say Florida International has taken a lot of outside shots as well. Uh, I'm not looking at the box score right now, but I would say the majority of their shots and what they've made, they've, they've taken a lot of three-pointers, which were, as Western Kentucky has really dominated getting the ball inside and scoring inside the paint. Florida International two for their last 12. Pritchett, a deep three. And no second chance opportunities here in the second half whatsoever for the Panthers. Don McHenry. Fye had his jersey tucked on, going for the rebound, no call. Arturo Dean running the floor and tipped back up and in by Deshaun Gittins. I tell you what, FIU is finding a way to kind of claw back a little bit. They've had some stops, they've got the ball, they pushed it out in transition. This is how you start a little bit of a comeback. Now I know it's you know it's kind of far-fetched, but I've seen crazier things happen right now. They've done what they need to do to start a little bit of a run. Shot clock in single digits, which is a rare occurrence for Western Kentucky, but Columbe is able to lay it up and in. Pritchett again, he's been hoisting up the threes left and right here in this second half. And that's now 16 three-point baskets collectively for the Panthers here tonight. Pritchett is five of nine from downtown. They can't afford to trade baskets with them right now. They've got to figure out a way where they can get some stops and prevent Western Kentucky from scoring in particular right now because they're up against the clock. Now Western Kentucky shooting 64% from the field. They've been pretty consistent throughout this game. Florida International really interesting in the fact that they're shooting 38% from the field but 46 from three-point range and 100% from the free throw line. But here, still trailing by 15 with five and a half to go. You're not going to beat many teams when you allow them to shoot 60% from the floor. Uh, that's uh, you've got to figure out figure out a way to change that and get some stops. It's very critical. Babacar five. 
Byron really wanted that ball down low. That was a great move from him. Spin move to get himself right there in the basket. Easy left-handed layup. Arturo Dean. Now Gittens. This time driving to the basket against Fai, and he'll get the basket and one, and Fai will pick up his fourth personal foul. The first Hilltopper who is really into foul trouble while there are two players, Gittens and Sonogo, who have four over for FIU. That was a good attack. I mean, if I hadn't got the benefit of the doubt tonight, that was a good attack from FIU. That's what they need to do. They haven't really got the ball inside all that much. But that's a good attack to him, and that's what's going to get them to the free throw line to try to get some of these easy buckets. It also stops the clock, which is critical for them right now. Leading free throw shooter for FIU at 82% Deshaun Gittens. Nine for nine from the line as a team for the Panthers here this evening. Columbay, nobody met him in the paint and he rolls it in. He was looking to pass, I think, initially and then realized that nobody was closing out on him. He was caught off guard by how wide open he was. Gittens trying to create space for the shot and it'll be Tegan Moore who's called for the foul. I'm not, I'm not sure if they called that on the floor or shooting, or they might be in the bonus. I'm not really sure. They indeed are in the bonus. So, Gittens will go to the free throw line. First miss of the night from the stripe for Florida International. They're 9 of 10. And the foul on Gittens with 4. 26 left to go. And for Gittens, he is done. His fifth personal. So he falls out on the night with 13 points to a four from downtown. One of three players in double figures for Florida International. Alambay has it knocked out of his hands. Arturo Dean, Krikovakic, and he continues to be the hottest of the three-point shooters for Florida International. Yeah, he's been he's been big for FIU tonight. He's one of those guys that's been knocking down those outside shots. And also, that was a big lift. They got a stop, then they went back, got a three, chip away. Dante Allen coming up short for Krikovakic. All 15 of his points have come from three-point range. Under four, though, left to go. And the foul on Howard for Western Kentucky. The lead is 13 for the Hilltoppers, and the Panthers right now just can't get enough stops. 345 left to go from the Hill, and a big lead for the home side here at Diddle. Coming down the stretch here in Bowling Green, the Hilltoppers have led by over 20. They lead by 13 right now. Most of the second half dominated by Western Kentucky. Florida International has been very streaky offensively here in the second half. They've been on a mini run here, four of their last four from the field, but Dante Allen has been a handful and then some for Western Kentucky, leading all scores with 22 points. Dante Allen has really done a good job of coming in and having a huge game. He's really made an impact. He's got off, like we said, he's one of those guys that can really get it going and have a big scoring output, and he's done it this game. Arturo Dean at the free throw line, where he's a perfect four of four on the night. One of three players for the Panthers in double figures here. had 15 when these two teams played here last year. He's got 13 here tonight. He's a good player. He, he can get inside the lane. He always has an advantage with his quickness. He has the ability to get around anybody. And defensively, he has a huge impact. McHenry with the floater. 
Dean for Hawkins. Krivakopic. Dante Allen. Passed nope. up the transition three for a better shot. That was a big bucket because West Kentucky, they went on a little drought right there, kind of broke it, where FIU was trying to find a way to chip away at the lead, try to get themselves back into this game. So that was a big bucket for them, especially from Allen, who's been big all night. And now with under three to go, the Hilltoppers are going to work on the clock and try to cement what will be their 14th win of the season. But Dante Allen continues his tremendous shooting night. Now four of six from three-point range and 27 altogether to lead all scores. Yeah, Dante Allen, he didn't want to work on that clock. He knew he was hot. He was ready to shoot it like he's been all night uh, before the ball even started to make it his way. That shot was going right up. You could see. Now all but one of the last five meetings between these teams have been decided by single digits. It looks like tonight is going to be the outlier in recent matchups where the Hilltoppers have just pulled away here in the second half. Yeah, Western Kentucky really did a good job coming out in the second half and really breaking their press, getting these easy buckets, getting the ball inside. And I think that's what really has been the difference. Now, I don't think FIU has really shot the ball well tonight, but Western Kentucky's had a lot of open looks and they've really converted on the fast break and in transition and getting the ball inside. That's been the biggest difference. Two minutes left to go. And it'll be a pair of free throws for Seth Pinckney. That was just a good roll from Pickney. Just good hard ball screen, and as soon as the guard got around there, he rolled as hard as he could to the rim. But also, Newman was just a little bit late on that help side defense. This will be a good bounce back win for Western Kentucky after dropping each of their last two. A close one at UTEP last Saturday and then a two point heartbreaker just prior to that at New Mexico State a week ago when they gave up a 23 point lead in the second half. But the home court has met home cooking for them so far this season. And they will remain unbeaten here at Diddle Arena, running their record to 9-0. You've got to take care of home court, especially in conference. It's so difficult to win on the road in any conference. Dante Allen having a career night. He's got 30 for the game on 5 of 7 shooting from beyond the arc. And the basket and the fall for Seth Pinckney. But boy, Dante Allen, the transfer from Kentucky, preseason all-conference USA player, former Mr. Kentucky basketball in high school. He has had himself an evening here in Bowling Green. Yeah, he's really done a good job tonight. We talked about it. You know, he's been one of those guys that has really been hunting his shot all night. He's put himself, his off-the-ball movement has been really well. Uh, to put himself in position to get those easy baskets. And also, he's been a very aggressive offensively. Now, Florida International is usually a pretty good team when they can score over 70 points. And they're one shy of 90 right now, but this is such a one-sided game in favor of Western Kentucky. It just shows you how... You may be a high-scoring team, but when you run up against a team like Western Kentucky that can run, that is hitting their shots, that are scoring in so many different ways, it's an eye-opener. Yeah, and we knew uh, coming into this game, this was going to be up and down. Both teams, they love to play fast-paced basketball, but also I would say the shot selection from Western Kentucky and their ability to break FIU's press has really been the difference maker. The quality of shots versus West Kentucky compared to FIU. West Kentucky has found ways to get guys open buckets and attack the rim and get the ball inside. But also, 
when you have a guy like Dante Allen who's going for a career night and has really hunted his shot and is playing well and making hard shots as well, it really puts Western Kentucky in an advantage. Dante Allen out of the basketball game now. And a turnover by Don McHenry. And it will stay with the Panthers. McHenry, the leading scorer on this Western Kentucky team, but has had a relatively quiet night by comparison to all of his teammates. He didn't really need to have a big night. I mean, he was finding his ways to impact the game in other ways. He really got out and pushed the ball as well, uh, found the teammates. But also, when you have a guy like Dante Allen who's going off, you know, it's, it's good where you don't have to rely on him so much offensively. Well, Western Kentucky knew that the full court pressure and the intensity was going to be applied early and often by the Panthers here tonight, but they were ready for it. And as we highlighted earlier, once they broke that first wave, it was pretty much a fast break opportunity, and they were scoring at will at times. Are you surprised the Panthers weren't able to just adjust at that point, and once that front line was broken, they didn't have an answer? I really thought FIU might pull out of the press. Uh, and the reason I say that is because I thought West Kentucky just got better at handling it and breaking it and getting guys open as the game went on. And it still seems like they maintained that. They were going to stay with that style. But I really would have liked to see them kind of switch it up a little bit and try to break West Kentucky's rhythm because they got really comfortable with that press, especially in the second half. McHenry has it stolen for Makopic, quickly to the basket with one minute left to go. And now McHenry with Howard ceiling, feeds Howard down low. They, they, good rim run by the big man, also put himself in scoring position. I think they wanted a little bit of time off the clock, but. Now Marshall ahead to Teagan Moore and McHenry for the finish. That should just about finish things off here with half a minute left to go. The lead 14 points for the Hilltoppers. I, I would bet this is a situation where they can get the ball across half court and try to one run down the clock. These two teams will meet again on March the 2nd in South Florida. For the time being, Western Kentucky will remain unbeaten here at home. They'll climb to 500 in Conference USA action and improve to 14 and 6 overall on the season with a 105 to 91 win over the Panthers from Florida International. Such a big win for Western Kentucky after coming off a couple losses to come back to home court and protect your home court and try to get your confidence and also before you head back on the road it's going to be super important. Four players in double figures for Western Kentucky. Led by Dante Allen's 30 on the night. 9 of 11 from the field, 5 of 7 from downtown, and a perfect 7 of 7 from the free throw line. Dante Allen had a huge impact on this game. He really came out and asserted himself, especially with Lander being out for Western Kentucky. Really took advantage of those minutes, and he's a guy who could, this could give him some momentum and carry over to other games. All right, well, the Kentucky 8-1-1 play of the game, Tyrone Marshall. Watch this cut. This is a great cut. Also, a great pass from Howard. Gets the ball inside, cuts right there for the easy bucket jam. That's an NBA play right there. Good game. And the Franklin Bank and Trust player of the game, not a shocker, Dante Allen as the redshirt senior from just south of Cincinnati, the transfer from Kentucky here tonight with 30 points for Western. Yeah, Dante Allen came out, had a big night. You can see him right there, played aggressive offensively, taking the ball to the basket, getting inside, finding his open shot from the outside, finding 
good ways to move without the ball, putting himself in good scoring positions, wide open three-pointers, knocked them down all night. Good win. Good win. Dante Allen was just sensational here this evening. One of the four players in double figures for this Western Kentucky squad that averages three for the season. So your final thoughts here, Tyler, on this victory here tonight. To me tonight, I thought Western Kentucky did a great job of handling the pressure from FIU. They got great quality shots, but also Dante Allen, he took over the game. He was the star tonight, really gave Western a huge boost. All right, Western Kentucky improves to 14 and 6. Florida International drops to 7 and 13. It is a 14 point win for the Hilltoppers over the Panthers. And now for Tyler Hansbro, I'm Steve Schlanger. Thanks for joining us, everyone. 105 to 91 is the final. As we say, good night from Diddle Arena in Bowling Green, Kentucky.